Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm George Pino, CEO of Commercial Brokers International here in Los Angeles. And there's a subject I actually wanted to get on and talk about a little bit today because it kind of took the entire industry by surprise, it seems, um, just uh, a couple days ago. And, and still a lot of confusion surrounding it uh, with both buyers and sellers as well as agents. So I really want to talk about it, and that's, of course, the property tax or rather the transfer tax laws. Um, a lot of people this past election in California really focused on Proposition 15, which was the split tax law, um, and it did not pass. This is where they're looking to have the commercial properties reassessed, a, uh, reassessed every year and leave it so that the residential wouldn't be reassessed. Now, what did slide by in a lot of the elections, in a lot of the cities, was the transfer tax laws. And these were looked appear to be really targeted toward commercial properties because they're based upon certain price points that really don't affect residential as much but will in some cities. And what's of interest is that the transfer tax in some of these cities more than triple and sometimes ten times more than what it was previously. And let's go into, uh, go into it and what we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about is kind of what is happening overall and then also all the different cities kind of what's affecting it and we'll go from the bottom to the worst or the the lowest to the highest as far as changes go in in the coming year so everyone's been familiar with transfer tax in fact throughout cal uh, not just california but throughout the united states there's only 11 states that don't have a property transfer tax when you go to sell a property and that's typically a percentage of what the sales price is, um, usually less than 1%. Some cases it may be more than 1% in certain cities in some areas, but generally speaking, less than 1%. In fact, California itself has a, a transfer tax law that's been in place. It typically goes to the counties. And it's $1.10 per thousand, or just 0.11%. So that doesn't sound that much. However, a lot of cities have enacted their own transfer tax laws. And typically, um, a lot of these are within the Los Angeles area and also in the Bay Area. So when we start looking at that, these cities have had transfer taxes that are either equivalent or more than what the county transfer tax is. So in addition to the dollar ten per thousand, for instance, Santa Monica has had one long standing of four and a half dollars per thousand so four dollars and fifty cents so total transfer tax would be five dollars and fifty cents still under one percent which is still not too bad it's about 0.55 percent all in here's where it gets kind of scary new transfer tax in santa monica it's actually going to double it's going from your uh three dollars per thousand uh from the four to six dollars per thousand uh a doubling of just that transfer tax. On top of that, there's also the county. That sounds really bad. Now, this is only for properties in excess of $5 million, so the majority of the residential properties aren't going to be really hit with it. It's going to be primarily commercial. It sounds bad. Nowhere near as bad as some of the other areas. And what I mean by that is when we start looking at some of the properties in Northern California, their transfer tax already is going like Albany, for instance, is going from 1.15% to 1.5%. Doesn't seem that much of a growth, but it equates to $15 per thousand, almost triple what the Santa Monica tax rate, transfer tax rate is. Piedmont is going from 1.3 to 1.75%. San Leandro is going from 0.6 to 1.1%, almost 100% growth as well. Now, when we start looking in the Southern California marketplace, we start looking at some of the other areas. You know, Los Angeles City, they have a transfer tax of $4.50 per thousand. That remains the same. Um, and then you have Culver City. Now, Culver City is actually one that has a very interesting uh, tax methodology as far as a split tax with pricing, which is new for transfer taxes. You're looking at your typical transfer tax, $4.50 per thousand, if it's a million and a half or less. If it's a million and a half to just under $3 million, it jumps from that 0.45% to 1.5%, so $15 per thousand, more than triple what it was previously. And that's in that 1.5 to 3 million range, so that's gonna affect some residential people as well. More importantly, now we start talking about the three million to just under ten million range. From there, the transfer tax goes from one point five percent to three percent. 
This is equates to thirty dollars per thousand, five times higher than the rate for Santa Monica, and close to ten times higher than what it was previously in Culver City. Now the crazy part, because it sounded crazy before, but it's getting even better. Ten million and above, it actually jumps to forty dollars per thousand. So this is going to affect a lot of institutional investors on the side. And, and here's how we're going to start looking at it and how what kind of impact that it's going to have. But before I get into that a little bit, um, I just throw out, you know, and, and uh, stay tuned because I know you all want to hear what the worst city is because believe it or not, Culver City is not the worst when it comes to the transfer tax. But how is this going to affect investors? How is it going to affect sellers? How is it going to affect buyers? Well, the immediate effect is a lot of surprise, um, and it's going to hurt the seller's pockets right away because these transfer taxes go into effect, even though it was just announced a couple days ago, they go into effect in Santa Monica March 1st. They go into effect for the other cities in April. So all those properties that are currently in escrow that aren't going to close before February, February 28th that in Santa Monica are above $5 million, their transfer tax is going to double. Okay, so right away, there's unfortunately nothing you can do about that if you're in escrow. Now, if you're not in escrow yet, and you know this is coming down the road, what are we going to see? Now, typically speaking, where we have areas and cities that have high transfer tax rates, we start seeing that it becomes a negotiation. Historically speaking, throughout California, the sellers have always paid for the transfer tax. What's happening and will happen, I think, with some of these other cities that have higher tax rates is we're going to start negotiating between the seller's going to pay half, the buyer's going to pay half. The issue that arises there is when we start looking at it, it doesn't sound that bad. But one thing to remember is that a buyer can't finance the transfer tax. So that affects how much they can actually purchase or buy. It affects the debt and the coverage. Uh, ratios. More importantly, if it's an investor looking to sell the property in three years, four years, five years, it's really going to impact investment horizons, especially down the road, because the longer you have a longer investment horizon, your IRRs are impacted. But if all of a sudden you add an additional four to six percent additional cost of sale, it's going to impact the IRRs and actually turn change a lot of the holding periods and or kill a lot of the uh, uh, investment deals that are happening right now where it's going to cut into almost all the profits or their returns are going to suffer dramatically where the investors are not going to be interested. So this is where we have to actually start looking at things. Where, how are we going to overcome this? What are we going to do? And where is it going to go from there? And all of it is really just a matter of communication and negotiation. So you know, if you're an agent out there, Get out there and let everyone know. If you're an investor and you have other investors that you work with, let your investors know that this just passed, this may affect us down the road. So, you know, communication, if you plan ahead and you have a good plan of action, you're going to be able to overcome this and adapt to it. But um, if you just go into it blindly, it can impact all of your hard earnings. It's also probably going to kill a lot of the, frankly, it, it's probably going to kill a lot of the. Uh, uh, short-term investments, the speculations in that um, people that are looking for just one or two years, if they're looking for a 10% increase, then all of a sudden their cost of sale is more than 10%, they're not making any kind of profit. In fact, they're losing money. So realistically speaking, you're looking at investors now that are looking for properties that you're going to be able to make at least a 20% return um, in appreciation within the first year or so if it's a short-term investment, just to make profits happen. It sounds a little gloomy, but it's really not. You know, other cities and other areas have overcome this. A lot of it is, again, according to negotiation, we're going to go through a little bit of painful uh, adjusting periods. But for the most part, I think we're going to come over this and ahead of everything um, and, and do very well. Now, you've all been pay waiting patiently. Worst city. Um, surprisingly, not in Southern California. So, uh, but. When we look at it, San Francisco. San Francisco had a Proposition I that was passed last year, and this actually raises the transfer tax rate if you are from 10 million and up to 5.5%. This is a $55 per thousand increase. Um, so right now they're at 3%. Now, if you're 25 million and up, it's a 6% 
transfer tax rate. Now, that's $60 per thousand. So this is also a transfer tax rate. So even if you're doing a 1031 exchange, it's not eligible for that. You can't, it, it's, you don't defer your transfer tax. You have to pay it up front. It is a cost of sale when you go to sell the property. So make sure your underwriting models take that into consideration. Look at it, and if anyone has any questions on that, reach out. I have my contact information at the bottom, and uh, I'll be happy to walk through what, how this may or may not impact you.